Here we are on our last look at Joseph um, before we head a new direction for some of these uh, little talks that we're having. Uh, so I'm going to start with a recap so you can be caught up to where we're at. We're in, in the book of Genesis and the Bible and we're looking at the story of Joseph and we know that he's the favored son of Jacob. We see uh, this is a quick recap if you want to catch up you can go back and read Genesis 37 and on but uh, he's uh, tossed in the pit by his brothers who are thinking of killing him they decide not to they sell him to some traders he becomes a slave he gets taken down to Egypt he ends up in Potiphar's house he works his way up the ranks through Potiphar's house Potiphar's wife really likes him he rejects her she accuses him of lies He's sent to prison. He works his way up through the prison. He's in prison for several years. The two guys he's with have dreams. Um, he is able to interpret their dreams. They come out true. He's forgotten about. Pharaoh has dreams. Nobody can interpret them. One of the guys, finally, who works for Pharaoh remembers Joseph. Joseph comes up, interprets the dream. Pharaoh's all impressed. He makes Joseph in charge of everything except for the Pharaoh. Uh, they had seven years of feast, seven years of famine. They stored up all sorts of stuff. Everybody's coming to uh, buy their food from Egypt because they have so much. And the brothers, lo and behold, as we saw last time, show up um, to get help. And Joseph is shocked to see them. And he had tried to overcome uh, his his mental and emotional anguish that had come from his experiences and he keeps one sends them back they bring back the youngest son um, and where we left off last time was Joseph had told them who he was and so now they were looking at him not realizing that it was really him they're struggling to believe it uh, and that's where we are and and i don't know about you i don't care much for puzzles i enjoy reading um but i don't care much for puzzles but most of my family likes puzzles and and they will put one out on the table and they'll work on it for it seems like years it's probably not that long but you know but but the way that a puzzle works I mean, besides the fact that you, you know, put those pieces together, is that you need a picture of what the end product looks like so that you can appropriately find the pieces that need to go places. And, and people have different strategies for how they do it. Some people do all the border. Some people just go for it, helter-skelter. Uh, I don't know what your plan is. But either way, you still need to have the overall picture uh, to know what you're working towards. You got to look at the picture on the box box and that picture is a guide For how to go forward Well, when it comes to life and the world God has that picture. He sees the picture of the end uh, in Ephesians 1 chapter 11 says he works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will he not only sees the picture, he's the one that drew the picture. He made the puzzle. He thought it up. Uh, he is the one that is in charge. He rules it all. He guides everything toward that end. The NLT version of Ephesians one eleven says, All things happen just as he decided long ago. He made it up. Proverbs 21, there is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Psalm 22, he rules over the nations. Hebrews chapter one, he upholds the universe. He is in charge of it all. He drew up the picture for the puzzle. He manufactured the picture, the puzzle. He cut the puzzle into the pieces. And so he puts the pieces back together because he knows where each and every one of them goes. Well, here we are with Joseph in the midst of that puzzle. And we see in, in chapter 45, verse 2, Joseph had told his brothers, he had kicked everyone out um, of his room, his office. And in verse 2, it says, Then he broke down and wept. 
He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him, and word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. He kicks everybody out. He breaks down in front of his brothers. He is weeping. He is crying so loudly that they can hear him outside. And he's in this, you know, almost probably near soundproof door. They can hear him outside and, and they're getting worried. They don't know what is going on. They've probably never seen Joseph like this before. And so they go and tell Pharaoh what is going on. And you think about why Joseph is, is weeping like this. He's weeping over them. He's weeping over the past. But everything, all the emotions, all the pain, all the anguish, all the struggle, uh, all those years are all coming out in those tears. And he does something very interesting in verse 4. You know, he's done this crying and this weeping. And in verse 4, he tells them to come closer. And so they came closer. He wants them to come over to, to him. Imagine their hugs. Imagine the disbelief. Imagine the shock. Um, I, can, I can picture them all coming over slowly, looking in his eyes, seeing that it's really him as he cries, the, the hugs, the talking, the questions, the tears. Um, you know, you can picture this going on. And, and this is the part where in the movie, the, the wives, the girlfriends, the daughters, whatever, they're all bawling their eyes out. And the, the men are sitting there and, the, you know, they're doing, well, I'm not going to cry. You know, they're holding it in. And, 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 but they're really, they're crying inside. Uh, because you can feel the connection happening. And it's very interesting that he said for them to come closer. He wanted them in. He wanted to bring his brothers in, his family in. And then he cares for them. You know, you might think his first reaction now that I'm the big boss would be to hammer them into the ground. But instead, he's hugging them. He's crying with them. He's talking to them. He's, he's asking about his dad. Is dad still alive? You know, what, you know, how can we get him here? And then verses 9 through 18 we see that he helps them. He cares for them. He tells them to hurry back, get everyone, bring them down. He's going to take care of them. He's going to provide for them. Pharaoh hears about all this and he tells Joseph to have them use all of his stuff, all Pharaoh's stuff. And so he sends their stuff, his own things to go get Joseph's family and all their belongings to come down to Egypt, bring everything down, and they will get the pick of the land. They're going to get the best of Egypt. The prince is their brother. He's the prince of Egypt, if you've you know seen the movie. He's the prince of Egypt. We have a prince that's a brother too. In Romans 8:29, it says Jesus is the firstborn with many brothers and sisters. He is our sibling. He is the Prince of Heaven. And He has compassion for us. He cares for us. He desires us. He, in Matthew 9, 36, when He saw the crowds, this is Jesus talking, He had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He had compassion on them over being lost. He wants us to find our way to Him. He wants us to come to him. He wants people. He calls you to him. He calls us to that need, the need of a sibling, of that big brother, of that brother who is a prince. Joseph was that. Even though he was younger, he was the brother who is the prince. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I want you to come to me. I want you to give me your burdens. I want you to give me your cares. I want you to give me your worries. 1 Peter 5, 7. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. He wants our burdens. Jesus wants those things. He wants to take them away. He wants to get them off your shoulders. And he goes before the throne for us. He pleads to the king for us. The king of the universe. 1 John 2, 1 says, My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. 
But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. Our advocate, our big brother, is the one before the king of the universe. And so in this whole story of Joseph, brings me down to a couple of questions. Is Jesus your sibling? Is Jesus your big brother? Does he plead your case as an advocate? Is he your advocate in front of God the Father? If he's not, he calls you to him. He wants to be that. He wants to lift those burdens off your shoulders. He calls us so that he can carry those burdens. He cares for you. He cares for his family. And he will get you through. He will carry the burden, the struggle, the pain. He will lift it all off your shoulders. And in return, he wants your trust and he wants your faith to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is alive on the throne. He lived a perfect life. He died on that cross. And when he rose from the grave, you had the opportunity, the chance to have your sins, all the things that keep you separated from God, separated from a holy and righteous God, are washed away. And he wants that. And he will take away all the other things if you'll do that because when we when we give him our trust and our faith he then wants to use our life for his glory he wants to use your life to shine for others it's not an ego thing for god it's so that others see him so that they realize not only is he real but what is said about him in the bible is Joseph's life shows us that no matter what you're going through, God will use it. If you love him, he's going to use it all to bring about glory and to bring about good. It doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect in your life. And it doesn't mean that the struggles and pains and difficulties you have are going to just magically disappear. But it means that he can use those to reach someone else. But you've got to know him first. You've got to follow him first. You've got to trust him first. You've got to serve him first. So if you've never made that decision, why don't you contact us at the church? You can, you can message us on the YouTube channel. You can send us a message on, on Facebook. Um, we would love to help you on your journey to know Christ and to serve him. Because he wants to use you in this world to make a difference for him. And so I finish with what we've always said at the end. Be blessed and be a blessing. God loves you.